Is Cult of the Lamb the evil game that everyone's making it out to be? If you've scrolled through YouTube once or twice, you've probably seen about 100 videos already with all the clickbaity things that say, this game is evil, is it the most evil game ever made, or you know, hide your children, hide your kids, it's evil. But is it really as evil as everyone says? I'm St. Waffles, as you know I'm Catholic, and I kind of want to do a deep dive into this video and into these talks about this being a you know, satanic evil game, but as you know I don't like to do clickbait, I don't like to make things all like watch till the end of the video, so I'll start up front and say no, this is not the most evil game ever made, no this isn't you know the antichrist coming through video game form to corrupt our children, so chances are if you watch a video like that it's all clickbaity stuff just to get views. So what is Cult of the Lamb? Call of the Lamb is a management game mixed with a roguelite in which you play as a lamb that is selected by a god to destroy the other heretics and return him to life by creating a cult that will then believe in him as he believes, you know, more in the lamb, more in this older god, then of course he'll return to his former power and glory. Now, of course, there is a lot of imagery in this game that, you know, people do associate with evil things. Uh, as you'll see throughout the game here soon, I'll come across some tarot cards. Those are kind of like your power-ups. Those are the things that change between each run. You'll see a lot of deep red. You'll see, of course, eyes glowing, uh, magic, those sort of things. A lot of pentagrams. And I think at a first glance, that's kind of what everyone's drawing on for the inspiration of, oh, this is the most evil game ever. It's, look, there's pentagrams, and look, there, there's evil writing and tarot cards, and that's very easy to just draw upon, like, the panicky and get the Facebook groups and, you know, mixed or all in a, a big tizzy fit and all riled up. It's like, look, a game with pentagrams for kids. And I can see with the cartoony graphics and the cute animals and the cute lamb how, you know, maybe people think this is targeted towards kids, and I really don't think it is. As of right now, I believe the game is still technically rating pending. I've done my darnest to search for it, research it. Um, I cannot find it. It's actually got a rating. And if you Google the, like, uh, physical release of the game, it appears that it is still in the rating pending as of the last time those pictures were updated. But my And that's kind of the key point here, that I don't think any teenager would mistake anything in this game for reality, right? And I don't think any teenager is going to think that, oh, I'm going to go start a cult because I played it in a video game, or, you know, I'm going to go sacrifice people because I did it in a video game. That being said, you know, as a Catholic, if I had a, a kid myself, I don't think I'd let a five-year-old play this game, but certainly once you can understand the difference between fantasy and reality, I, I wouldn't see this as any more evil than any other game. You know, we had those happen back in the 90s with Harry Potter, of course, and Pokemon, where people said, oh, these, you know, evil encourages fighting and witchcraft and things like that. But once again, once you discover or have the ability to tell the difference between fantasy and reality, I don't think it's really all that problematic. But let's actually break down each part of the game and actually start talking about it here. So let's talk about the tarot cards first. Of course, um, anyone in you know Christianity, for the most part, will tell you tarot cards are considered evil. It falls into the realm of divination or necromancy, talking to spirits to kind of find out forbidden knowledge. As someone who used to be a tarot reader, I can tell you the tarot deck in this game is nothing like that. There's nothing about these that are giving you forbidden knowledge. There's nothing about this that even relates to a real tarot deck. If you were to turn the deck in this game into something, you know, physical, I don't think it would be usable as a tarot deck because it's, it's simply a video game mechanic. It doesn't appear to draw any inspiration from any standard tarot deck aside from just being kind of looking like a tarot card in general. Typically with the tarot card, you want it to give you some sort of number or some sort of information, some sort of suit. You're supposed to find some sort of information on the card that's helped you to, quote, you know, divine information. But I don't really see that as anything really an issue. You could honestly change the tarot cards to really anything else and it would, it would fit the game mechanic just fine, I think. So I, I don't really see them as an issue for for children or anyone. So you're not learning tarot from it's not teaching you how to tarot read. It's not teaching you how to divine or summon or necromancy or anything like that, right? It's simply just a video game mechanic that gives you power-ups. 
Now to talk about something that could potentially be a problem is that when you go into these areas like this boss that I'm fighting, when you defeat the boss, it tells you that you've defeated the heretic and that when you're finished these fighting these heretics, it's your crusade. You go on these crusades to fight the different heretics. And I would potentially find issue with that, simply because the issue of the crusades and heretics in real life, uh, especially when you're dealing with the Catholic Church and the crusades, is a very complex issue that a lot of people aren't truly educated on. And that lack of education leads to a lot of myths, a lot of misunderstanding, a lot of allegations, and a lot of problems. So using the word crusades and using the word heretics in this manner really does draw a lot of problematic parallels to the church. Now there's definitely not enough time in this video, nor is it the right video to go into the history of the Crusades and all that, but that part in itself could be an issue. Is it evil? No. Is it misunderstanding or misrepresenting? Possibly. On the topic of representing things or allegories or, you know, one thing's supposed to be another, the four bosses appear to be some sort of uh, parallel reference to the four horsemen. Now that in itself is not something revolutionary and new, you know, there's the whole uh, Darksiders games which you play as the horsemen. The, the, the horsemen are a part of this epic poetry that has drawn inspiration since Revelations was written, right? And I think that's about the closest they get to actually referencing anything like real world religion. And that's where I would say that you know they, they get away safely that this is clearly a fantasy because they don't draw a whole lot of real life parallels to real religions. They don't actually talk about God. They don't actually talk about the Bible, right? They, they reference the four horsemen. And like I said, they use the words crusade and the, the word heretic, which I do draw a problem with. But overall, I think that's what really separates this as a, a fictional fantasy game is that they're not trying to they're not trying to put God into this. They're not trying to put religion into this. They're simply using symbols and things that people would see or understand because of pop culture or, you know, the, the world we live in. And I also think that's the saving grace when it comes to the cult management kind of an aspect. You don't see a whole lot in this video because I was doing, quote, one of the Crusades. But once you're out of the Crusade, you go back to your base and that's where you grow your cult. So you give sermons, you feed the people, you build them housing, shelter, and then you build different upgrades that basically make your Crusades a little bit easier and make it easier to manage the colony. But again, they're not really teaching you anything about actual cults, right? They're, they're not teaching you how to actually indoctrinate someone into a cult. You just click a button to indoctrinate them, and then the lamb says some gibberish, and off you go. I would be a lot less lenient towards the game and actually you know, put it in the evil category if they were teaching people how to actually build a cult, right? If they were showing you the techniques that people use to brainwash people or the, the techniques they use to separate people away from their family to actually get them to fall for cult tactics as well as you know the manipulation. If they went deep into that, I would definitely say, hey, that, that's a problem. But again, this is just a fantasy, so they, they skip over all that and they, they're clearly doing it as a part of the fiction and not something as an educational tool to, you know, start turning America's youth into the next, you know, satanic panic. On the topic of Satanism, though, there is, of course, uh, upside down crosses all over the game. You'll see quest markers are kind of upside down crosses when uh, people have something they want to say to you. They'll have upside down crosses, so those are featured heavily. Now, of course, if you follow Hollywood or watch any horror movies, you know, you know, the upside down cross is the sign of the ultimate evil, but it's really not that. There's actually a whole lot more to the history of the upside down cross. Because of Hollywood and stuff, we associate that with an anti-Christian symbol, but really it's called the cross of St. Peter. Tradition shows us that Peter requested for his cross to be upside down when he was crucified because he felt unworthy of being crucified in the same manner as Jesus. And so they had it turned upside down, and that's actually been a symbol in the church for a lot longer than Hollywood has tried to turn it into, you know, a Saturday morning cartoon horror thing of upside down crosses and turning heads and vomiting blood and all that sort of thing. 
A quick search into a little bit more of the history will show that uh, there was a person in the 19th century who was a cult leader who claimed to be the reincarnation of the prophet Elijah and had demonic rituals and perverse acts and uh, was condemned by the Pope and used the symbol. And that's probably where a lot of this comes from, but we'll see that it was actually, you know, a Christian symbol first and foremost before it was demonized and changed in much more modern times. And since we're on the topic of Satanism, let's talk about the actual teaching of Satanism in the game. Like everything else I've discussed here, there's no real education on it, and that is, again, why it escapes any actual evil or wrongdoing, right? Uh, I've talked a little bit about it before, but before I converted to Catholicism, before I found uh, you know, this path in my life, I myself was a Satanist. And just for a brief, you know, a little bit of education on we're going to talk about, you know, there are seven fundamental tenets of the Satanic Church. If you if you look up, like, the Satanic Temple, for example, they will give you those tenets. And if you look up, uh, I think his name is Levine, uh, you know, kind of the founder of modern-day Satanism, you can find those sort of things. And none of that is present in the game. And again, that, that's where I'm going to say that this is clearly a work of fiction. This is not evil, because they're not trying to teach anyone anything. If to level up you had to, you know, do something like learn the first tenet is one should strive to act with compassion and empathy toward all creatures in accordance with reason, then we might be able to say, okay, this is actually, you know, teaching people, and if they're looking for a teen audience, then it could be a form of, you know, learning those sort of things or opening the door to those sort of things that we should strive to not learn or, you know, strive to, to rebel against. And even in the game yourself, you know, you're kind of violating the tenets and doing uh, all things that even even Satanists would consider evil, right? You're, you're brainwashing people, you're forcing them against your will, you can have them fight in uh, these gladiator-style battles for your entertainment. So even if we wanted to accuse the game of being, you know, this, this evil thing that's trying to perpetuate Satanism, you know, it doesn't even follow the, its own rules or tenets or beliefs in that, right? So how could it be that if it's, if it's not even being faithful or true to it, correct? Now, all of that being said, you know, would I purchase this game to give to Sunday school to play to learn? Of course not. You know, like any sort of entertainment, uh, we as Christians, as Catholics, as uh, children of God, have to use that discernment to really understand what is good for us, what's not good for us, what is fictional, what is not fictional. And that's kind of where this falls into. As, as a fiction, sure, we can enjoy it. And if you're, again, a reasonable person who is good in their faith and understands, you know, the difference between fantasy and reality, what is of God, what is not of God, then there, there's no harm in playing a good game like that. Would you give it to a five-year-old to say, here's how you should understand what Satanists are and what evil is and, you know, get your moral from here? Of course not. Of course, back in the day when, you know, Harry Potter was a concern that there was, you know, they're targeting our children and they're making witchcraft, you know, something that's exciting to learn. And valid or not with that, I mean, we can definitely say Harry Potter had a, a big cultural influence. And I'm, I'm certain there's at least a few people who got interested in, you know, witchcraft or wizardry, whether real or fantasy because of it. But I don't think there will be even one valid argument of saying someone decided to start a cult because they played Cult of the Lamb and thought it was so fun. I, I just, I don't see anyone playing this and saying, you know what, the cult life is so glamorous, I'm going to do that in real life because it's so wonderful. And I myself have probably played a dozen horror games that use all the same imagery as this, and we don't call those evil. So it, it seems really to be, like I said, people are jumping on this ability to uh, make some copy-paste, some clickbait, because it, it's popular right now. I think if we want to talk about, you know, genuine evil in gaming or, you know, evil in games, then I think the conversation would have to move towards things that are truly, you know, evil or abusive towards humans. Things like loot boxes that abuse the gambling tendencies or, you know, games that try and get kids to play so they can take mom and dad's credit card and, you know, pay them money or games that uh, encourage whales to spend one, two, three, five, ten, twenty thousand dollars a month on. 
I think if this was anything other than virtual signaling, that's where we should, you know, lay our focus in on the games that are you know, abusing people, abusing, you know, human mentalities, gambling, loot boxes, things like that are things that we could definitely be putting a focus on as evil and need to be stopped as compared to fantasy games that feature a cute lamb and a little bit of a cult, you know? So there you have it. It's not the evil game everyone's claiming it to be, but again, they're not claiming it in any genuine manner. It's more of just, you know, clickbait and it's what's popular right now. And hopefully you learned a couple things about this game, uh, you know, or, you know, learned a little bit about uh, real life religion from this video. I always appreciate talking with you guys. And there's certainly no shortage of games that we can talk about with uh, religion and gaming. You know, Doom is a big one that uh, has, you know, a Catholic main character in potentially the canon that's interesting to talk about. And there's a lot of uh, other, quote, games that have been called evil out there, such as the Harry Potter games or Pokemon. Well, if there's any games out there you want to hear me talk about or any topics you want me to discuss in regards to Catholicism and gaming all that, please leave them in the comments down below. I'd definitely love to hear about it. And if you could leave me a like and a subscribe, that of course ha ha helps my channel immensely and I always appreciate that.